Welcome back to Southern Latitudes. I'm Robin. And today, uh, well, I had to stake up the tomatoes earlier. But, you know, we went back up to, like, uh, the heat index of 100 degrees today. So, uh, I was busy in the morning, but then this afternoon, I was like, oh, I'm not coming back. I don't know what happened to our beautiful fall, you know, wave of cool weather <laughs> that we had last weekend. It's gone. But anyhow, my plants are wilting. My clamp let loose on my hose right here. Can you see that? So I've got to loosen it. I'm gonna try to do it where you guys can see it too. Just a little bit, not too much. But he's being his nosy boxer self. Okay. Sorry, that's probably the worst filming job ever. Anyhow, I was on the phone with my good friend when this cut loose and it soaked down my shirt and pants right while I was chatting on the phone. So there we go. We've, oh, hold on. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Let's see if that works. Well, that looks pretty good. Better than better than when it broke. Okay, it's going through. Nothing. Just water to end. Yay! I think we're back in business. Awesome. I've been trying to hold it when I carry it. I've been trying to like pull it from behind the clamp. But anyhow, it's it's still let loose on me. Oh, look at my white swan marigolds. They are beyond thirsty right there. Oh, yeah. These guys really should have been in the ground. You know, before this hot week started. Look at the roots coming right out of there. Oh, yeah, these things have well, way outgrown their little tray. That's why they're not holding water. Because there's so many roots in there. I bet if we were to lift this up, oh, I don't want to break it. This one has roots on this side of the cell and also roots going into that cell. This one looks like it's dead, dead. We'll see. Maybe they come back in the morning. These are, what are those, firecrackers? No, chocolate. Ooh, chocolate sunflowers. Ooh, that's so cool. I was thinking of not just pulling the weeds out, but I was thinking of removing this one, this vinca, maybe throwing it anywhere else in the yard. I don't know. I was thinking up there, maybe. Wouldn't that be kind of pretty, like the, a pink here and a pink here on the side? And I, that way I wouldn't have to mow the grass. I think there's actually two plants in here. Or maybe it's just one. And it may all die back, but it'll come back in the spring and it'll be wherever I plant it. So that might be a good place. And then that opens up all of this for these flowers. And I'm thinking I might do that. I'm not going to touch this side over here with the pink zinnias. Oh, i got to be careful out here because the squirrels are dropping pine cones. Look at that. I actually just raked that not that long, you know, maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And they are dropping everything in there. So there's another pink zinnia. Oh, these are just so beautiful. And then this is what this one hang on let me carefully step back here this is like a, a double layering of flowers i don't know what you call that but that's really beautiful with that zinnia oh, look at that and these are periwinkles or vincas and those are black-eyed susans oh and then this this just has to come out of here that's a vine and um, the Black Eyed Susans were going up the trellis. This is all its old vine from the spring, which is pretty cool. It doesn't that look neat? Kind of like a gnarly rope in there. And then I've, um, somewhere in here, there's a borage. <laughs> but in a couple cranberry hibiscus, one here and one there. And then inside here is my, um, Pickering mango 
for next spring but for the you know it doesn't need it's not going to be very showy all fall so i have all these different yellows and reds the white swan marigold is actually yellow colored so it would go beautiful in here and then the chocolate sunflowers would go great this that you see down here all this that looks like ground cover is the uh, black eyed susan vine so i would leave it and i would just kind of push it aside to put the plants in but like i'm saying this is just like way too much i need to open this area up for plants and then i have a little bit of these persian carpet zinnias there aren't they so cute this one hasn't showed its colors yet i'm sorry i don't have a lot more exciting things i do still have to hey let's we could do that i still got to split these plants up here remember from the other day we didn't do the salvia look at this another pink oh i guess i could put that in the bed with the other pinks this is um i think this was supposed to be the green lime which was a hybrid and then all, none of the babies are coming out the uh, i'm sorry lime to blush none of the babies are coming out right and i do need to split this one this is artichoke let's go ahead and do that now okay here we go i think i got enough cups this has already been amended from the other day when you saw that last video on saturday and let's pull these out these are the imperial star artichokes and oh man look at this one there's a name for that when um this see how it got all narrow right there in the center oh there's a name for that and y'all remind me in the comments but that's usually a bad sign that that the seedling will probably retract and die this one looks pretty good holding on to dirt and everything <clears throat> but anyhow it's going to tell you about imperial star usually artichokes require like um two years before you start getting the vegetables as far as i know right most of them are you plant them the first year they go through the cold snap of winter and then the next spring is when you're going to get your artichokes now that is in the traditional up north you know cooler temperate zone scenarios now here in florida especially in central florida we're subtropical and we don't have we don't grow on the long day we grow on the short days so this hybrid that's a cross between two different artichokes and i don't know what they are i haven't looked that up but this hybrid in particular um is known for you start it in the fall i saw it on epic gardeners um page i'll link that at the end but he starts his in the fall. They get nice and big, which I'll show you the bigger ones I have um, over there by the pool. But you start them, they get, you know, good sized leaf on them. By the time we get cold here in December, they, they'll probably be good size, hopefully, you know, if everything goes well, they'll be big. And then they get that cold hour or chill hours on them. And then that should trigger these. They'd need less chill hours for the Imperial Star and um and then you're supposed to be able to grow artichokes and then hopefully they survive your winter now i don't know if that'll happen here where we are because like 9b in california is not like 9b in florida or even like i said sometimes we're 10a here are my other imperial star artichokes minus some weeds these were started on july 20th so that makes them um, just a week shy of two months and this one and I lost the fourth one and this is the third one kind of got puny started to lose the other big leaf but I think that might it just might need sun so I've been trying to put it to the outside now this ground cherry is kind of choking them out as far as light they're uh, not get so I got to get these in the ground too hopefully tomorrow um, but anyhow here's the two bigger ones that are like seven weeks old so that doesn't take very long and then, then you know by the time we get close to our first chill or frost that's usually around christmas here so i think we're doing okay these will be every bit th that big 
by the time they um every bit this big by the time they get to that date and hopefully everything can get through chill hours and then we can go ahead and have artichokes so it's still i'm so glad i went through and did the second sewing because uh now where's the bad one i put an x right here is the one that had the weak stem i bet we lose that but we still might have five more plus two strong ones and maybe a third one so maybe seven or eight to go into next year with okay i was just checking my phone for time and you know what it's only 6 45 i bet we can get this whole thing at least cleaned up enough to get these guys in the ground so they don't have to spend a single more you know another hour another day in these cups because they're definitely suffering in those cups and hmm, i guess we're just going to start with yanking on this and I'll put it in a bucket and keep it wet and we can figure out where it can go tomorrow. next day actually it's the next afternoon and oh my goodness I should have got the video for you three hours ago four hours ago because everything was looking so great and now it, the sun has hit it so it, it's um, I'm about to bring the hose back out but I do want to finalize the video for you um, the everything's <laughs> kind of wilted again the the uh, the, ah, slow down Robin the marigolds have popped back up the zinnias are still suffering a little bit. The the sunflowers down here, I probably just didn't water them enough. Oh, look at this piece of healthy weed right there. Okay, and some of the, some of the other sunflowers, I guess I watered good enough. So it wasn't a full clean out of the um, the flower bed, but it was enough to get started. We should be getting rain here very soon, but I'm still gonna go ahead and water these poor little pitiful zinnias in here that's a persian carpet zinnia so anyhow that is one more bed at least kind of down we were trying i'm trying to do what i can to reduce the number of plants that are on my decking because they're you know they can stain and ruin the deck or, or you know whatever being wet like that constantly so, <laughs> buddy's going to the bathroom thank you buddy um, so anyhow, it, let's call this one done for now, and uh, at least it's been touched, it's been revamped, and I'm pretty happy about that, and I'm going to put a hose on it next. So take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye! Mm -hmm.